All right, so let's get started with using SkyPaint. Go ahead and open up a browser and type in SkyPaint in the search and it should come up as one of your first options. So we'll click on this and it does look a little bit ghetto, so don't worry about that. It's a very useful program and you can download the trial version for free. So let's click on this link and it's a pretty, it's, I think it's one or two megs, so it goes relatively quickly. Definitely looks like a Windows 95 program. Now, the plugin directory under Paint Program, you want to click this as you install and direct it to the Photoshop executable, wherever that is on your computer, usually in Programs or Program x86, and click Next and finalize your installation. Now we want to go into Photoshop and hook up the plugins correctly here. So we can go to Edit Preferences Plugins, and I already have it installed, but if you hadn't, you'd click Additional Plugins and you'd browse for the folder. And we're looking for SkyPaint and say OK at the root directory. Now you can go to your programs and open up this SkyPaint executable. Get this beautiful program. You can left click to look around your skybox in its current state. It gives you these default um, textures here. Now let's go to the folder and click Resize Panorama. And let's type in 1024 by 1024. Now it's going to be even more pixelated, but don't worry. Once you get the right images in there, it'll be a lot clearer. So let's save this. And I'm going to just create a sky paint folder um, for this demo. And we just save a uh, single image. And it'll automatically create all six views for us. Remember, this is actually, all these textures are being mapped to a cube. And a cube has six sides. So when we go into Photoshop now, we'll open up one of those images and go in that directory and they should it should actually have six of them so here's our six images you can hold shift and open all these up at once and this is the best way to start using sky paint because you can you can paste your reference right in here and then patch up the seams later which is the whole kind of purpose of using sky paint so now i'm going to locate some sky reference and if you have ever used cgtextures.com, I'd recommend uh, looking at some of their skies. I'm going to go in the full skies folder. I've downloaded a lot of these, and I'll look at some of the overcast skies. I just want something, you know, interesting and uh, with some solid lighting. So I'll switch my icons to extra large so I can kind of see what's going on. And I sort of like this one, full skies overcast 0011. Yeah, it's kind of a farm setting. It's got some nice uh, sunset lighting or sunrise. Um, yeah, a lot of cool little little trees and some farm buildings. So this will do nicely. All right, so now we're going to go into image size and make our source texture here a little more a little more usable. So because we're using 1024 width on each one of these individual textures, if we make it a 4096. That's the equivalent of four 1024s. So this will be nice and easy to paste in and we'll have a start to our skybox. Now I I'm using a marquee and if you, if you notice on the top, I have my style set to fixed size and the width is 1024 PX and height is 512 PX. The, this matches the texture size of our final output. So now I can just copy by hitting Control C and paste them in. Now we're just worried about the top half of these textures. The bottom isn't going to be uh, visible in CryEngine, so you can just paste these in to the, the default kind of template that we just saved out of SkyPaint. So here's the front view. Now I'm going to go in and under Edit Preferences, I want to go into Guides and Grid, and I want to make it so that this, this source image has a snapping. So I'm going to change it to Pixels, and I'm going to do subdivision set to 1 and every 512 pixels. Now if I go to view show grid we can see the grid marks right there and if you have snap to grids on which I already do anytime you make a selection it's not only going to be 1024 by 512 automatically because of our fixed size but it's also going to stay within those grid lines. This is not absolutely necessary but it's going to make it a lot easier 
uh, f- as you work and iterate on this and bring it back and forth from CryEngine back to SkyPaint. So I'm copying the next one over and I'm going to paste it in the SkyPaint demo underscore RT for right. Then I'll select the next group over, copy and paste them into back or BK. And the final one is the left. So I'll copy that, bring up my left texture and paste that in. Now I'm gonna minimize the source. That's gonna come in handy a lot as I edit these. But it's important that you have resized your source so that it's equal to your final resolution. That way it stays consistent whenever you're kind of painting, you're pasting that stuff in and and filling the seams, it's gonna be the same resolution as all the other shots. The scale of houses and trees, that stuff will all stay consistent because of that. So now I'm flattening each one of these and saving them. Make sure all those are saved in the exact same spot that you, you had exported them. And again, this DN texture, that's the bottom. We don't need that at all. So no need to save it. Now in SkyPaint, we can go to our folder and choose open and just pick the image there and it'll actually have all of them stitched together. You can see some of the the seams, but the general horizon line is there. Now it looks like the right and left might have been switched on mine. So I'm gonna have to go back into Photoshop and flip flip some of these textures to get it lined up better. So I flipped one of those and I'm gonna re-import it just by saying open. Now that that's lining up a little better. We still have a, a seam on the other one, so we'll go ahead and flip that and then come back into SkyPaint. All right, so now we've we flipped a few of the textures around and it's lining up a little better. The lighting matches closer. So uh, just remember, it's a little bit of a, a trial and error on this, this process uh, to get started. Now you could jump in earlier and just start painting seams out or you can spend more time trying to match it as close as possible. I'd recommend you know getting it lined up as close as you can. At first, that'll save a lot of time later. I'm just gonna close all these images out except for the source. Now we're going to start fixing up the texture and painting the seams out. So I just want Photoshop to be a little cleaner right now. Frame it up on an obvious seam and click the paint this view and say OK. And that'll just snap right into Photoshop. And we can just paint it just like we'd paint anything else. You can use all your brushes and Photoshop tools here. It makes it really fun and, um, you know, there's not much of a learning curve here because you're hopefully very familiar with Photoshop already. So this is the stage where having our source image kind of resized to a similar resolution as our out final output is very handy because now we can copy and paste elements from the source to fill up the, the seams that we have. And since we mostly use the source sequentially, it'll be pretty easy to find spots that you need to patch up and stuff will, will be pretty, um, will line up pretty quick. And you'll see essentially what we're doing, we're taking an area of the cube map that has the perspective in the corner and we'll we'll, we'll be painting a flattened kind of shot of the clouds. So that perspective will go away and on areas that are corners, it'll actually project and be kind of seamless. So you won't even notice that you're looking at a box. It'll it'll appear just to uh, be, there'll, there'll be no perspective in the sky, which is what we want. So I'll paste that right in, and then I'm gonna line up the horizon line first so that the buildings and everything are flat. It's one of the more important aspects of this. Then I'll just take a real big eraser with a soft edge brush and kind of erase out the borders. Undo that one, I'll just start with the left and right. We don't, we don't have anything going on in the top yet, so we can just leave that edge there. Undo that. Fade these trees back a little bit. It's getting a little blurry, so we'll have to make that crisper towards the end, but we'll go with this for now. So you flatten that down with Control-E, and then go into your filter 
sky paint and it says uh update sky paint and you'll jump right back to here so now that's the area that was our corner view with the seams and it's gone but of course now we have other other seams that we need to address so we'll keep doing this rotate over it's a pretty obvious one here so again go paint this view and it jumps back right into uh, seamlessly into photoshop and we'll just rinse and repeat the same step you know multiple times until this whole skybox is filled up i'll narrate it through once more and then we'll do a quick time lapse and get you caught up to the finished sky sky paint version again i'm trying to find a similar location on the source that i'm looking at and i flipped this one to match the the lighting which depending on how well you register in the beginning you might not have to do that step but i had to do some kind of jerry rigging to get everything lined up right now i'm doing using clone brush with a cloud shaped alpha to fill in any seams that that occur then i go back to filter launch sky paint again once you do that once it should show up at the very top because it's the last filter you've used and then it becomes really quick to switch back and forth the shortcuts once you get used to it in sky paint you'll just hit enter and that'll jump to photoshop and then from photoshop you can hit control f which is re repeats your last filter or it might be control shift f and then you can just keep using those shortcuts to jump back and forth and it becomes a really quick process sampling some of the color trying to infuse that in so now here's the time lapse of me finishing the panorama just back and forth from Photoshop to sky paint. Now we're getting up higher in, in the sky, so I want to sample from areas on the source that are they're higher up, obviously. It gets a little darker, and we can block these values in at first, and then we can paste in actual cloud reference later on. This whole process in the beginning of just getting the, the textures for your skybox, eventually, once you get used to it, it'll take around an hour, so it's not too long. For our celery land map, Danny actually went out to a ferry and took a really nice panorama. And it was a great spot because there were no buildings very close. So you got the, the far vistas and the, the kind of mountains without much interference. All right, so this is getting pretty close. I'm going to give it one last look before I save it out. Now, this doesn't uh, necessarily mean we won't be back in sky paint, but it's a good time to start thinking about setting up the, the CryEngine textures. And I'm going to make this a... I'm going to just put it in a new directory called Sky Paint Demo Finished, just so I have the other backup one as well. And I'm going to close these out and save over the source so I can open that up again later on. And I'm going to test. I want to make sure those files saved correctly. So I can open them up, take a look at them. Looks like they're, they all saved in that folder. And I'll also just launch SkyPaint again and go to File. 
open in that folder, it'll only show the FR, the front version, but that still loads them all and stitches them together. So whenever you go back to iterate on this, you would just load that same texture again. So it's all still there. And that concludes our first chapter. Next chapter, we're gonna go export the these textures into CryTIFFs and bring them in the, the CryEngine and set up the skybox and lighting and everything. Thanks.